Um, for opening the lab's main- Oh, so I can just take the main entrance then, right? Oh, with a desert. That's what that's telling me, right? I think. Key's missing. Can't be operated. Yeah, use a subway key. Use it. Sure. Train can't move in that to- Okay, sucks to suck. I was thinking about wrapping up in the near future anyway. And if this is gonna put us, like, right before, like, doing this stuff at the lab. The lab seems like a section where it's like, once you start that, this is gonna be a long section. So... This might actually be a good place to wrap things up pretty soon. And then at the beginning of next stream, we can immediately go to the lab and, you know, do all the stuff there. That'd probably be pretty good, right? Then I can go get some foods, do some editing stuff, and then get some good sleep dreaming about video games for tomorrow. <laughs> you know, where I'm going to be behind a booth giving out QR codes to anyone interested in whatever free game comes with that. Apparently, it's like some free game. I don't actually know what it is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Want well, to link to an article about the Paper Mario thing? I would be intrigued about it if I remember to. Uh, he'll read up on it later. That'd be the case. When it comes to the remakes, you want though, you just sort of want the Japan only Fire Emblem games to be remade and globally released. Would be cool, but I don't know if we're ever gonna get an official version of things like Binding Blade. At least you know some of them have gotten remakes. Like you know, Fire Emblem One got a remake with Shadow Dragon on the DS. And then Fire Emblem 3 also got a remake on the DS, being like the second Marth game. But that was Japan only for some reason, I'm fairly certain, on the DS, if I recall. Which is like, so weird, they released Shadow Dragon in the West, but not the, uh, not Mystery of the Emblem. Genealogy and Thracia need remakes, yeah. That'd be cool there. The one that I'd most want is Binding Blade, just because it's like, I've played 7 a couple times, my failed run and my successful run. And I know that it's the prequel to the game I haven't played of Binding Blade. I'm kind of curious what happens in Binding Blade. Heck, maybe we'll uh, get a recap of what happens in Blazing Sword in the near future here. If I do end up doing it, like, sooner rather than later after all. With the whole weird situation with that coming to online soon, you know? Is a thing. But Engage is going to take me a good while and... Uh, I'll, I'll get through this reading week catching up on things and then see what that puts me at i'm almost at 12 hours here see what the status is on stuff around here and then come to my proper decision on whether we're playing blazing sword in the near future i think you know maybe i have some decent time maybe um wait i should probably head out of here head into like the main city i should probably stock up on some pokeballs and stuff can i just like take this out rather than saving here because if i save here i'm gonna be like what the hell what was i doing but if i save out in like the main city then i'll be like oh yeah we can go to the lab you know but yeah it is really good that the world doesn't grasp you as much as previous games that's fair enough there i think explorers dx is massively more likely than a new pmd game it'd be a lot less work especially since they already have a switch game engine it's just a matter of converting everything from explorers to the new game engine i mean they'd be able to you know convert they'd be able to slap a new original game into the you know rescue team dx engine as well it's just they'd have to create, like, new original things rather than being able to be, like, use this engine, create the things from that game. You know. Um, let's go to the place I buy Pokeballs and stuff. Is what we do. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, just a matter of converting everything from Explorers to the new game engine. Still make fans happy, and most importantly, still print money. Yeah. And knowing Spike Chunsoft, it would be, like, a pretty good game that they took their time with, you know? More work and time and money, yeah. And again, I'd be fine either way myself. I do love me some Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers. I'm cool either way. Alright, you're the guy that sells me Pokeballs, so let's stock up on that, because I'm not going to remember to by the beginning of next stream. Oh, you sell Ultra Balls now! Give me like 10 of those. Use that on a Raikou, and it'll match the colors anyway, so it's not a big deal at not being a standard Pokeball. You know? Yeah, give me some more of this crap. I'm gonna throw a Premier Ball as a free bonus. Nice yeah, if I got a free Premier Ball with those, like, 10 Ultra Balls as well. So I'm only gonna get, like, three Premier Balls here. I probably really shouldn't have burned through all five of my Premier Balls. Considering this, then. Thunder Underwear! You said under. Okay, uh. I'm bug type. I'm watering Bug type Pokemon. On weaker Pokemon. Wait, what exactly is Nest Ball again there? I'm gonna get, like, five of these for funsies. And get like five of these for funsies. All right, I'm broke. All right, hopefully I didn't need much in the way of healing items. What are you looking at, good sir? Huh? Oh my! You even visited Pyrite Town with his awful notoriety compared to that place. FedEx City is a hundred times more beautiful. 
I can't save out here, can I? I don't know. Hope things are going well today. As precise. Also, sorry about, you know, the fact that I'm going to end the stream here pretty shortly. Cool. Either way, too. Still missing Explorers of Dungeons for your collection. If they announce a remake, there would be a sudden influx of used Explorers games. I mean, yeah. There would be that. Might their price also go up because there'd be, like, a higher demand for them all of a sudden? You know? Do I just save in Fenex City? Something like that. I have to go deep into Pirate Town to save there. Uh, the Pokemon Center is, like, pretty close to the entrance here. Hopefully, I don't... Hopefully, it's not too long before the next session. And I end up forgetting what's going on. I probably won't. We go to the lab next time. And we do the next major section of story. And stuff. Right. Right, surely. Um, I'm fairly certain my Pokemon are already healed up and stuff. Yeah, my Pokemon are already healed. Oh, thinking about stuff over here. I got those incenses. And uh, the legendaries are taking a while to uh, purify. I actually wonder, should I have a look at, like... Vivid Scent. Our massage Suicune using a Vivid Scent. Suicune was delighted. The door to Suicune's heart opened up a lot. Oh. Oh. Apparently that's a lot. I guess it takes a long time for the legendary Pokemon, huh? Huh. But yeah, then if I catch Raikou in a uh, Ultra Ball, then we can have, like, normal Great Ball Ultra Ball. Like, the three there with the three legendary. That could be cool then, right? That could be cool. It would have been most fitting if uh, Entei was the one with, the, like, the red standard Pokeball. Suicune was the Great Ball one. I'm not restarting my playthrough for that, though. It's not a big deal. Oh, one other thing that we can do before we, uh, before we end the stream. Now that we're here, actually. But we do this really quickly. Because I'll forget in future streams for that name of Pokemon redemption earlier. We have to ask if your Scarlet Violet essay gets too long. Will you consider uploading each chapter as its own video? No. Um, is the case there. Especially considering, like, you know... There's both a resurgence in, like, super-duper short-form content and super-duper long-form content. It seems like stuff in the middle seems to be phasing out from what I can, uh, from what I can tell. But, you know, short-form content and long-form content seem to be, like, the big things online nowadays. Like, if you see a video essay that's, you know, titled What I Plan on Titling the Scarlet and Violet video essay, which is the most successful death on arrival, and you see that it's so many hours long, it's gonna be, like, Holy crap, that really has to, like, delve into some stuff there. I want to click on that. Rather than just, like, oh, here's, like, a kind of long discussion on Scarlet Violet with one thing. Here's a kind of long discussion. No. So. I would not. I will upload them individually for channel members. Will be the case. Just because I don't have enough rewards for uh, channel members as is. So anyone that has, like, a channel membership to the YouTube channel will be able to get them individually early as they're finished and I, like, fill up upload space and stuff like that next week is going to be the uh, first episode of the podcast and then past that if i don't have anything to fill upload slots i'll probably just like upload some member exclusive chapters there just for like hey appreciate you being a member of the channel here's some stuff early for the final thing there but no i don't uh i think it would be more sucking up to the algorithm to release it as one full thing i feel like it would harm me more than helping me like releasing them individually it means i'd be able to get like views and revenue and monies off of the work that i've already done right now but i feel like the long-term game gain is uh, not that great there much as youtube membership stuff it's whatever the creator sets it to which for me is 99 cents a month because it's the minimum that you could set it to is the uh, case and it's the equivalent of a twitch subscription except the difference is with a twitch subscription the the creator gets 50 percent and twitch gets 50 percent on youtube it's 70 30 the creator gets 70 percent and youtube gets 30 percent so, for every, like, $1 channel membership, I get 70 cents. If I was more focused on making revenue with channel memberships, I would have set, like, you know, you can set up to, like, three tiers or something like that, with that all have different rewards that you can set. I just, I just include channel memberships just to have, like, emotes in YouTube comments and, like, badges and stuff like that, you know, is the, uh, is the thing where Bob, I was just like, yeah, just for the sake of having that, let's just do it, essentially. So, that's what I did there. And I figure, you know, there's already the Twitch subscription here. This is my main subscription thing, Bob. here. Is, you know, Twitch with, you know, subs and all that. 
you know, YouTube is a much smaller thing. And because I don't do a massive ton of YouTube live streaming anyway, I was just like, let's just set it to like the cheapest possible thing YouTube lets me set it as. And then, you know, just roll with that. And, you know, then I can roll those out for those who are interested in that thing, my Bob. So I'm really not all that, you know, profit driven for channel memberships. If the day I ever jump ship from Twitch to YouTube happens and, you know, I put all my eggs in one basket in YouTube and I actually start relying on this, like, for the sake of income, if I start relying on content creation to, like, keep the lights on, then I might reconsider. But as is, it's like, yeah, let's just have a way to have, like, emotes and badges in comments and stuff like that. And, in you know, live chats of once in a blue moon when I do YouTube live streams. And, you know, sometimes I'll release some things early that I'm editing. And I don't really, you know, release a whole lot of content early for channel members. So I should, or I haven't done it for a while. So I should start uh, doing it some more here is the case. But yeah, Dollar Month is fine. Didn't know it was creator set. Yeah, so it's a... Uh, well, creator set within, you know, a certain range. There's, like, different things that you can set at. Like, $1 is the minimum, for example. No, in Google, it might have been $10 a month. That's one of the levels they recommend, I think. I don't know. I can check. I set it as $1 when I first set it up, like, forever ago. And then I haven't checked it since then. Because I haven't had any need to, you know. Um, which, fun fact, it also works like Twitch subs. Where uh, once you get, like, to X amount, you unlock another emote slot. So, currently, I have, like six of the seven original emotes i think the one that we're missing is like acoust for love over on uh, over on youtube um if we get like a few more channel members and we uh then we get that emote if i really want that emote so i can just make some alternate accounts and just pay like what like two or three dollars for the two or three members to get that <laughs> if i really want because sometimes i want to respond to people in my comments with like acoust for love but i can't is a thing all right so prisma then as was redeemed earlier the hit on top we can do that yeah sure do that in that a case yeah i can check i think the maximum that you can set it to is like 500 dollars or something <laughs> you can charge people like 500 dollars a month for some like exclusive benefit of your channel i i should just <laughs> open up the 500 dollars a month tier and say that's a tier where you get feet picks that's <laughs> what i should do where is the stupid slope to be a child member now. Well, I appreciate that. Welcome to the YouTube version of Team and Harmonic. I appreciate the one doll hair there. All right, let's swap into Sweet Let's have a look at the child memberships actually. Because what is the maximum that you can set it to? I think it's 500, but I could be wrong. <laughs> All right, then we shift here. No, gosh dang it, exit there. This is what we do. Attack from both sides, get flanked. Yeah, subbed on both platforms there. But yeah, I just set it as the minimum because, like, I don't want people to have the expectation of, like, oh, gosh dang it, do I need to subscribe on both platforms? It's like, nah, for, like, subscription stuff, here's Twitch as, like, my main kind of platform and stuff like that. So YouTube, I was like, yeah, I'll just set it as, like, the smallest that it lets me set it to so I still get to, you know, try it out. I saved, right? But yeah, I haven't actually looked in the channel member settings for a good while. So I am a little bit curious is the thing. So yeah, I'll probably start uploading some chapters individually like that. And that's also a way to get, like, potential feedback. Oh, I switched my input. This is not a capture card game. I have to minimize the game. What the heck am I doing? I'm going a little bit insane. Um, let's see here. If I go to YouTube Studio, because I think the max that you can set it at is, like, something really ridiculous. And I think you can make up to three tiers? Earn, I think, is the tab. I think it's this. I don't know. It's been a while since I've tinkered around with this tab here. Actually, wait. You know, I could just do this and then do display capture like this. Then it's easier to see and stuff. In terms of memberships, when you set that up, um, total members joined zero days ago. I appreciate it, Mythic. Yeah, I, I do not exactly aim to make like a massive ton of revenue off of channel memberships. I actually plug channel memberships in like the, uh, in the Scarlet and Violet video essay at one point here. When I'm talking about, like, Aino's section <laughs> and all the wacky stuff with her, I decide to use that as an opportunity to plug channel memberships. Easy plug there. But it's not, you know, I don't put, like, a big emphasis on that. I wonder when the next emote slot is there. Best practice is create up to six... Wait, it wants you to make up to six there? And it... I used to have an intro thing, but it kind of sucked, so I took it away. Yeah, so there's that. Um, so we have those emotes there. Um, so in the near future, I'll probably be able to add a Coos for Love. What's really weird about emotes on YouTube is you can use these in comments on that channel, 
but no other channel. It would have been real- I would love to, you know, write comments in other channels that have, like, these emotes, but I can only do it, like, on my own channel. So it can at least be fun, like, responding to people in my comments with things like Acoustic Alert and stuff like that. Exclusive roles. Wait, what does that even mean? Female Harmonic, Canada, loyalty badges, exclusive- wait, what does this mean? Oh, oh, that's a thing that I made being, like, oh, you get access to- you get added to that there. That exclusive roles is something that I wrote. Was a thing there. Yeah. That, essentially, is the thing, Bob, that you get with that. So you can add own custom perks, like, uh, I send you all my feet pics. Like, you can do stuff like that. So you get a lot more wiggle room with YouTube memberships than you do Twitch subs. Like, you can always write in the description of Twitch or something like that. Like, all my subs, I'll do this for. But on, like, the actual channel membership screen, you can describe basically whatever you want to describe as rewards. But then, you know, it's up to you to follow through on that. Okay, I'm not- I'm not doing that there. Like them separate in some way, as you have a habit of <laughs> never finishing partially watched videos, definitely a you issue, but you- <laughs> nonetheless. Yeah, I'll upload them individually as, like, member videos and stuff. And then eventually upload, like, the whole thing. So, as I've mentioned before, it's kind of like I talk about pre-order bonuses in that video, where it's like, I don't like games that have exclusive things behind pre-orders. Make it exclusive for a time. Where it's like, those that pre-ordered get access to this right now, but everyone just gets it eventually. That's the way that I handle my member exclusive content during like the once in a blue moon that I do that. So, unnamed level 2 price to be set, perks from previous levels, and then you can add like additional perks. Testing, whoa, yeah, you pre-ordered Harmonia content with the video essay there. So what can you do? Okay. So yeah, this is the lowest that it lets you set it as. Um, it looks like one of the ones it recommends is that, or at least sets it as popular. So, this is what it recommends for low levels, this is what it recommends for medium levels, this is what it recommends for high levels. Levels for super fast. The highest you can set is $700 Canadian! <laughs> so, yeah, I guess this is probably the most common one that, like, creators set is, like, low levels. That's, like, the basic stuff, I guess. I don't know. I don't- I don't really tinker around with channel memberships, because I stream on Twitch. I don't stream on YouTube. I have done streaming on YouTube, but, you know. It's not something I've tinkered around with a whole lot. So yeah, this is the same level of like Twitch's membership, but again, like it's better rates for the creator though, since you know 70-30 as opposed to 50-50. So I gotta give YouTube a that at least. That's pretty cool. Um, high levels, yeah, that's the price of like a tier three sub on Twitch. Is like no wait, that's that's cheaper because it's twenty five dollars USD. This is Canadian here right now. Is the case? Yeah, sweet seventy cents. I appreciate the seventy cents there, man. A few more of those, and I might be able to buy myself a coffee that I don't drink. Woo. Yeah, I'm earning big bucks now. That's crazy. But yeah, so I guess that's even cheaper than a Twitch thing, Bob. This would be a little bit... It's probably around that. What is 25 USD to Canadian? I don't know. It's probably something like that. Apparently, this is another popular one for high level. I can't even imagine paying a creator $80 a month. Like, what? You know, who... Who does that? <laughs> and then, levels for super fans. Apparently, 150 is popular. <laughs> I'm tempted almost to make a thing and just have it be like a meme thing, Bob, of like <laughs> all the feet pick. No, I don't think I actually would uh, set this as a tier thing, Bob. But like, it has been one of those thoughts. You know how you have those thoughts that are funny in your head, but you probably never actually do. That's me with setting higher tiers of channel memberships, which is like. The $700, the perk description, is waste all your money. <laughs> no way, that would be the perk title. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Should I actually make it for the memes of it? And it's just called waste all your money? <laughs> oh man. Gameplay with you? So it looks like they give like a bunch of suggestions for things for members. This is something that Twitch doesn't really do there. Exclusive members only videos, exclusive access to new videos. So I guess I do that. I don't include that in the perk description for the channel membership just because I don't off I don't always do it. It depends on if I'm working on something big that I can reveal early. Like the Scarlet and Violet video essay. Like I can publish chapter 3. I can publish chapters 1, 2, and 3 to that in the near future. You know, here's chapter 3. It's basically done. Um, you know. But I don't include that there because it's like... I go spans of, like, months without posting members' exclusive content. <laughs> Making the $700 one of waste all your money. 
I'm almost tempted to, just for memes. Just because even anyone clicking, like, the members button and sees that as an option, it would just stifle a laugh, you know? <laughs> be the case. Um, exclusive members-only videos, early access to new videos. I would never do exclusive members-only videos. Like, I would not do that. No. I would- I'd do this, though. Like, the time-limited thing there. Members-only live chats, members-only live stream- no. I- I am not a big enough creator to do something like that. And even if I were, I wouldn't want to do it anyway, I don't think. Member shoutouts? Member only polls? Priority reply to comments? Wait, what does that mean? Does that mean that, like, I myself will identify if I see a member badge? Th and I'm gonna feel, like, more incentivized to reply to you? Or maybe I'll get, like, more notifications from channel members or something like that? Like, what does that- what does that mean? Because that's- it's not like a bot can automatically priority reply. That's me replying. Like, so, what does that mean? Like, I select that and it just means that if you're a channel member, I'm gonna feel more incentivized to talk to you because you're giving me money? Like, what does that mean there? Or behind the scenes clips for members only? Like, that clip where we found your hideaway? <laughs> post that into- post that into shorts? Or something like that? I mean- you can already find that just by looking on, like, the Twitch end of things. If you just go into, like, the Twitch live streams and peculiar posts, you can find it anyway, is the case. So, that's not, like, a giving me money perk. That's a, uh, tuning into, like, the already provided behind the scenes in the description below perk there. Members only chat rooms? What does that mean? Does that just mean, like, you're supposed to make, like, in a Discord server, like, an exclusive chat for that kind of thing? I have seen some Discord servers before that have exclusive chats just for subs and slash channel members or whatever the equivalent is meh gameplay with you what does that mean even does that mean like you play games together or something like that like maybe if you're a uh, smash channel if you're like a competitive smash player you do like coaching sessions with someone connecting on social media what does that mean does that mean like i follow people back yeah i suppose that would that would make sense for that description right connecting on social media like we chat in dms <laughs> Nobody's allowed to chat with me unless you give me money and then we can like reach out on Twitter DMs. Photos and status updates. I I think I've heard about that where some people treat like YouTube kind of like a almost like an Instagram kind of thing where they post photos and updates and things and some people might make it member exclusive. Oh, uh, this is where you get the exclusive feet pics. Exclusive wallpapers. Exclusive gifts. Maybe this is for like graphic designers or something like that. They give stuff out. But how long would it stay exclusive? It'd be like a freaking NFT. You could just share it around. Discounted merchandise. Oh, that would be an interesting thing, Rebob. Like, for creators that have merchandise, where it's like, if you're doing, like, a monthly subscription anyway, then here's, like, a discount on merchandise there. Virtual video collaborations. So I guess that means that you're, like, in videos and stuff. Whenever I'm doing, like, community-centered things, anyone could just join in anyway. Like, when the next Mario DLC comes out, when the next Mario Kart DLC comes out, anyone that wants to hop into that can already hop into that. Like, that, I don't, I don't really restrict that kind of thing. I guess there would be restrictions on, like, multiplayer playthroughs we do, like Tales of Symphonia. Harmonia merch? I don't know if it's the kind of thing I'd ever do or not. You know? <laughs> I don't know if that would ever be the case. What? What? Oh, man. So those are the recommendations, but I, yeah, you can also do, like, custom things there. <laughs> Should I make it as, like, a, uh, $20 for the hat? This hat cost me $80 to make. No chance $20 for a hat like this. Not at all. The hat itself was, like, $30. And then buying, like, paint brushes, the actual paint itself, hair dryer, working a weekend at putting layers on, layer after layer there putting in like half a day's worth of work like my goodness i uh no i'm already you know i'm already losing money on times so, like if you count like in terms of money that i'm making in terms of working on this what if i can't words today how do i better describe this if you compare what i'm doing now of you know playing games on this channel and big chilling compared to working a minimum wage job if i had the hour the option of the two then i'd be making more money working a minimum wage job right now like, doing stuff like this already is me working at, like, a deficit compared to, like, my hours. You know, is the, uh, thing, Bob. I would- uh, Do I break even for, uh, the Scarlet- Not Scarlet Violet video, I say the Pokemon essays. I make a decent bit of revenue off of the Pokemon essays. Those pay themselves off, I'd say, compared to hours. But pretty much everything else I do wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be the case. So I'm already working at a deficit, you could say, in that sense. 
that would be extra more so. Like, even just the hat itself, if I bought, like, the same brand as this, this alone is, like, 30 bucks. You know, sorry, merch store, you would hope it would be mass-produced. Yeah, that would be pos possible. Blah, a possibility there. You can set up merch things through places like Streamlabs that automatically produce stuff and you just put, like, a design on them. But when I was trying to make this hat, I was looking around for places that would do designs that went all the way to the edges like that. But it seems like if you want to get designs put onto a hat, it's usually just like a little rectangular area right there. Rather than, you know, this entire space. You can't typically fill that all up. But technically, there are options with sites like Streamlabs and stuff. Like, uh... Let me log in here. That You look in pain. I'm gonna be honest there. I clicked log in. It, well, it's fro- Oh, it's frozen. Log in with Twitch, maybe turn off display capture for a hot second, authorize. Oh, I guess it wouldn't have shown anything there anyway. What? Come on, log in with Twitch, I already clicked this. Dashboard, oh my goodness, it's flashbanging me here. What the heck is going on? I don't use Streamlabs all that much anymore nowadays. I use it for some basic alerts, but I don't really screw all that much around with stuff here. Whoa, look at my streams and stuff like that. Introducing Streamlabs Ultra. It's a sub- Oh, gross. Everything you need for professional streaming, editing, branding, and more. Access everything for- I- I know. I know. I know what I need to do to, like, grow things here. I don't need to pay freaking $19 a month to have someone tell me to make more of those video essays that are doing well for you. Um, there are sites that you can do stuff like this, where it's like you just drag a design onto, like, a thingamabob, and then, you know, you set a price for it. With, like, certain minimums, they take, like, X amount of cut, and then they ship it out to anyone who orders it. And stuff like that. I need a logo design a logo. I actually haven't looked in this for a long time. It's probably been, like, a couple of years the last time that I looked in it. I don't even know what stuff they offer nowadays. I still don't- Oh, yeah, these are assets that I would have used for, like, alerts in the past. Not in a long time, though, jeez. Um, I'm just curious what thing where bobs there are. So, there are sites like this where it's, like, you can just slap on whatever design... And then, you know, sell them off and they get a cut and you get a cut and then you make revenue that way. It's just a bunch of clothing here, it looks like. I need to slap the one of the wackiest emotes onto this. There, that's gonna be... Oh, <laughs> you can see directly there. I like the random video essays you do, the RCT one was fantastic. Well, I'm glad that you like that there. Yeah, I'd like to do some more ones on other games. I think after, like, the Scarlet and Violet one is done, the next big one I'm gonna do is on Xenoblade 3. Something that isn't Pokemon. I haven't done that many video essays that are super long on non-Pokemon things. There was Pixel on here, I guess. You know, a lot of my other ones are kind of shorter. There was Dead by Daylight that was a bit longer there. That's the thing. Three houses. Maybe I'll do one on Engage. Yeah, I'd like to do some more there. I'd like to wrap up this section of Peculiar Potions and work on some more things. Anyway, I've thought about doing stuff like this before, but I've just generally been like, meh. Meh. I'm not making this. Maybe one day. It might be funny. <laughs> you know, just just for funny. If I randomly feel like doing it as a uh, silly thing there. Oh, I have do I have to delete this now? Or does it just always show this here? Unnamed level 2. It probably wouldn't show up, right? I would imagine. Probably not. Probably not there. Ugh. So, you know. But that's channel memberships in a nutshell. Is the uh, case. That's how they work. Use YouTube features and other apps that connect to memberships. Offering at least three price levels has been shown to boost revenue. I'm I'm not trying to get revenue from channel memberships. I already have like the subscription thing revolved with Twitch. I'll I'll do it if ever I jump ship from Twitch to YouTube and this becomes like my live streaming main revenue stream. But as is, I don't really care. You know, <laughs> is the case. Over perks you think can deliver consistently and add to a growing number of members. Meh. Previews of things and plugging it in a. The thing where Bob's here. You want to see where I plugged channel memberships in uh, the thing where Bob here? It was that Ayano's thing there. Where I'm like, this is the perfect time to be like Ayano. And uh, you can hit the join button to support the channel. And then uh, if it loads it. And it's that. And then also literally like every single subscribe green screen effect I could find. <laughs> it comes on as well. And uh... And like the un-green screened out explosion effect. And then of course the uh the that, you know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Neither here nor there. <laughs> It'll be like the one time in a video essay I've plugged it. 
Just because, like, I know sets me up perfectly for it. You know, I, I don't need these changes. But yeah, my membership revenue last month, $5.32. I'd be, I'd be eating good here. You know, it's definitely the case. I'm earning the big bucks off of channel memberships. You know it. You know it. Yeah. Living the life out here. <laughs> anyway, there's the, uh, there's the channel membership thing. Anyway, I think I'm done with this game tonight. Um, we'll go to the lab next time. We'll do, like, the next big chunk of story. Um... You can almost not quite buy a pretzel where you work. <laughs> Maybe one more month. Another month goes by of channel memberships and I'll be able to, uh, and I'll be able to buy a pretzel. Thanks all the channel members for letting me afford a pretzel. <laughs> Amazing, you know. But yeah, my general way that I see is like, I'm mostly doing stuff on Twitch. Twitch has subscriptions. This is like my main platform. Why would I set higher price tiers for this platform that I'm rarely live streaming on anyway? Like, what's the point? So... I would if I ever jump ship, or if I ever need to do it to, like, keep the lights on if I ever try to go at this, like, full time. But as is, who cares? You know, just just do it for the sake of having access to, you know, emotes and badges. That's the only reason why I made it. <laughs> I just want access to emotes and badges around YouTube as well, not just Twitch. <laughs> That's straight up the reason why I made it. Which has led me to the conclusion of, like, huh, I actually should make some more member benefits, so hey. Why not upload the chapters of the Scarlet and Violet video essay? So next week is going to be, you know, the podcast thing where Bob, week after that, hopefully Peculiar Potions episode 27, if I can keep things going at pace. And then week after that, if I don't have any other big upload for the week, then maybe I'll just upload chapter one of Scarlet and Violet members or something like that. Because yeah, I have, you know, I've had like big uploads going up for a decent while. You know, for this whole past month, there's been like a bigger upload every week. It's crazy. I just think I can keep on going at pace. It's craziness, man. Anyway, I'm going to be heading out of here for now. So with that, thanks everyone who stopped by and hung out for this set of shenanigans. Next time, let's find out what's going on in the lab. And since we have two of the legendary beasts and there's only one left, and we took on the one cypher admin that did not have a legendary beast, that leads me to believe that there's only one left with Raikou. And then we are pretty close to wrapping things up. So this shouldn't be a super long game. We're probably going to be at the ready for like final stages here in the near future. Maybe one or two more streams. Maybe. Fingers crossed. I'm going to try to beat it this, not this weekend, uh, this week off is my plan. Hopefully things go according to plan. But until next time, thanks all once again. And until next time, take care and see you. Goodbye. Farewell. <laughs>